Dad, but he's serious. Saddle up, it's time for Operation Cowboy. I'm Eric, and this is a Dad Bod History Snack. Okay, so it's late April 1945, and if you know anything about World War II, you know the Allies are basically crushing Germany at this point. One of the things the Allies had done back in February is that they had the Yalta Conference, and that's where the Soviet Union, the Americans, and the British had all gotten together and decided how Europe was going to be split up, especially Germany was going to be split up after the war. One of the parts of that agreement was who was going to have influence over what parts of Europe as well, including Czechoslovakia and the Soviets were going to have influence there. General George Patton, operating in southern Germany with his Third Army, has set his sights on Prague. If you know anything about geography, you know that Prague is right there in the middle of Czechoslovakia, and he is going to go after it regardless, because why not? If he can upset the Soviets, good on him. So he's charging towards Prague at this point. And here's where we get into the meat of this story. Because we got to go back to like the 15 or 1600s when the Spanish writing school was established in Vienna, Austria. And that writing school would have the famed lippets on her horses at it. And so this writing school in Vienna in 1938, when Germany annexes Austria, they move a portion of this writing school to this town called Hostau in Czechoslovakia. And they do this for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is knowing that Vienna is a big populated site. They don't want these horses harmed. They don't want this school to be damaged in bombing raids or whatever. The other one, uh, which is more Nazi of them, is that they want to create a more Aryan breed of horses. If you know anything about Lipizzaners, they're one of the whitest horses out there. So I don't know how that all works. It's 1945 and we're literally a week or two away from this war being over. The Spanish riding school at Hostel is run by a guy by the name of Alois Pajaski or Pajaski. Alois Pajaski is an Olympic uh, medalist from the 1936 Olympics in dressage and horse riding. Uh, somebody else who is an Olympic athlete, you might know from 19, uh, I believe it was 1912, is General George S. Patton. Pajaski is at this riding school. And he realizes the Soviets are not too far from Hostel. They're making their way from the east into Czechoslovakia. Pajaski, along with a handful of other German officers, because there's, there's several German officers at this riding school, including a Luftwaffe officer uh, and some other kind of regular German army officers, not SS officers, um, who are there at the riding school. And they realize there's an issue. If the Soviets make it to Hostau before the Americans are British, the horses are going to die. There's 1,200 horses 400 of which are these lipids on our horses, and there's not many of them around. They know because the Hungarian riding school in Hungary was overrun by the Soviets, and they ate the horses. So this is kind of this dire situation where the Germans in charge of this riding school and this lipids on our collection know that they need to choose who gets to take them over? It's either the Soviets who will kill and eat the horses, or it's the Americans and the British who will most likely save the horses. So that's when Operation Cowboy comes into play. So the German veterinarian there, a guy by the name of Lieutenant Colonel Hubert Rudofsky, realizes that this is a problem, and he starts working to get in communication with Patton's Third Army. And specifically, there's a group of this army called the 42nd Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron, uh, which is part of the 2nd Cavalry Group. And the Germans had given them a nickname, the Ghosts of Patton's Army. A lot of the officers that are part of this group are mounted officers, meaning they do ride horses. They know how to ride horses. This operation comes into play, Operation Cowboy. And essentially what's going to happen is with the help of some of these German officers, the Americans are going to send this small unit to Hostau across enemy lines. And when we talk about enemy lines, we're not talking about the regular German army here. We're talking about the Waffen SS. These are the hardcore Nazi loyalist so soldiers. And so they're going to punch through this line and get to this riding school and save these horses. So as part of it, Patton says, yes, this sounds like a great idea. I'm going to put you in charge of it. Um, there's a captain by the name of Thomas Stewart, and there's a major by the name of Robert Andrews, and they're going to lead this, this mission. And so Patton says, go ahead, go get them, make it quick. He knows that there's no time to waste. So they take uh, roughly 300 men. They've got a few M8 scout cars. They've got some uh, howitzer motor carriages and some chaffy light tanks, and they charge across the line. 
And on April 28th, uh, they carry out this operation when they get to Hostel. When they get to Hostel, and this is when some of the most interesting parts of this occur, um, they also release all these prisoners of war. And these prisoners of war are New Zealanders, they're British, they're French, there's Poles, and they're Serbs. And the Americans hand all of them weapons and say, you're now helping us because we're gonna need more people to get us across the line because we have 1,200 horses that we need to get back into Germany to save them. They have all these extra soldiers as well. All the Germans who surrendered, the Americans give them weapons as well and say, yeah, you're gonna help us too. Again, these are not the Nazi soldiers. These are regular German army soldiers who've surrendered. So they arm them as well. And the kicker, the last one, is actually somebody who is serving Germany, but by descent is Russian. Uh, he's a Russian anti-communist Cossack prince. And he, being a Cossack, meaning they ride horses and they're part of those units, uh, it's a cavalry unit, also assists. And so this group that is swelled in number from roughly 300 soldiers to possibly more than five or 600 is now moving west with 1,200 horses, some of which have to be put on carriages or trailers because uh, they can't be ridden. They're either pregnant or they're too young or they've just given birth. And so they're moving all these horses back into Germany. Now you may have heard this story. There was a movie made about it by Disney. It was a miracle of the stallions. Um, but this is also when Patton saved the Lipizzaners. And those Lipizzaners, after being brought back, were then distributed, and many of them ended up in the United States. Um, so it's just a fascinating story, uh, knowing that uh, the number of people involved was quite small, but it was also very diverse. It included uh, one of the only times that Germans and Americans would fight side by side during World War II. The other time being the Battle of Itter Castle, which happened within a week, uh, and it happened not too far from here either. Um, I hope you enjoyed this Dad Bod History Snack. Uh, I'm hoping it was put together well. Um, you know, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff, and uh, we'll see you later.